strong. Hindering men from making progress in life. Hindering men from taking steps. We took time to deal with quite a number of them. And yesterday we began to look at the stronghold of the enemy. We are people's assets and treasures. And family inheritance have been locked up. And then we took time to look into that. And today I want to take a step further and deal with what I titled securing your family territory. Securing your family territory. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. When the righteous run into it, they are secured. They are secured. I began to study the life of Jesus. And the Bible says that the prince of this world came to him but could not penetrate. He came but found nothing in him. I read the biography of a man by name John Knox. And this man was a missionary. He stepped into the city of Scotland. The man so secured Scotland spiritually in the place of prayer to a point that 30 years after he had gone, a stranger was traveling and he stopped over in Scotland and was looking for a beer parlor where he can buy a bottle of beer. He couldn't find any. And then he asked someone, he said, where can I find a bottle of beer? And they replied him and they asked him, are you a stranger in this land? He said, yes, I'm actually traveling. He said, oh, no wonder. A man stepped into this territory over 30 years ago and all the brewery shut down and all the beer parlor shut down. You can't find alcohol here. The man secured the territory of Scotland so much that you couldn't find alcohol. If what happened to unbelievers that don't know God and destroy them happens to a believer and destroy the believer, then it's an insult on Calvary. One of the benefits of salvation is divine security. The children of Israel were in the land of Egypt. The Bible says why there was darkness in Egypt. Goshen was so secure that there was light in Goshen. When there were frogs in Egypt, there was no frog in Goshen. When there were flies in Egypt, there was no fly in Goshen. When there were lies in Egypt, there, was no, there were no lies in, in Goshen. Goshen was another part of the city of Egypt. Just like when you go to American embassy, when they they sees light. When Nepal sees light, you will still see light at the American embassy. Because where they are coming from, light doesn't go off. The same country, the same city. But then, there is another section of the city that is different from the entire city. That is what salvation is all about. Today, I want to share with us how you can secure your family territory. I am a father and I'm blessed with three beautiful daughters. Like I told you before, poverty has lost my address. Because it's women that take care of their fathers. Ladies know how to take care of their father. If God bless you with baby girls, boys are good. But let me talk about girls a little. When God bless you with girls... He's already settling you for your retirement. Those are your retirement benefits. Man, don't look at me like that. When last did you visit your father? Your father calls that he is sick. The man you will hear the son say something like, I've been telling you to rest, but you don't want to rest. You need to be, you need to rest. I'm going to send you some money. Take it and rest. They will never go there. When a woman hears that her father is sick, even if the husband doesn't have money, 
you, if it means selling your shoe, you will sell it to She will trouble you, collect the money, and go and visit her father. So when God bless you with girls, it is your retirement benefits. When you are old, they will take good care of you. I don't like that term at all. Boys are very good. Men are good. They have their own role, but we are not here to talk about husband and wife issue. It's about family. The trouble and the fear of every father is how his family will be secured. A time comes when you stop worrying about yourself. You start thinking about your family. In Nigeria, where we all come from, we don't joke with family. A man may not be dressing well, but look at his wife. The wife must look good. Because all that the man labors for is to take care of the family. The word father means source, source. Source, and that's why when you are filling the form, the first thing they ask you is your sore name. This your name, what is the source? Where are you coming from? We want to know the source. So, is the father is the source of provision for the house. He provides food, he provides shelter, and most importantly, he provides security for his family. Every serious father works so hard to take care of the home front. It's not about him. It's about his family. It's about family. We, about how we want our families to look like. We worry about the security of our families. There are risks we can't take. I used to take risk. I, I, I used to take risk. Then I wasn't married. But when I got married, I was still taking risk. Until children started coming. When I want to take a crazy risk. I would think about them. And when I think about them. I will advise myself. I became more calculative. Because I am concerned. About the security. And the welfare of my family. The question is. How do I secure my family? First of all. Is it possible to secure your family from harm, to secure your family from destruction, to secure your family from intruders. Yes, it is possible. There are men in the Bible, mortal men like you and I, but they secured their family to a point that even Satan had no access. Job, where we read Job chapter 1 and verse 10, Satan was talking to God and Satan said to God, you have so secured this man. You have built a hedge around the man. Actually, it was not just God that built the hedge. It was Job's attitude that enabled the hedge from God to surround his family. The Bible says every day, every seven, seven days, Job will come before the Lord. He will offer burnt offering. According to the number of his children, he will call them by name. While he's offering sacrifice unto God, he is calling the names of the children. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the ways to secure your children and secure your family is by praying for them and calling them by name. By name. By name. By name. Do you know that any time you spend time to pray for someone, God must reveal something to you about that person. Most of the men that flows in the prophetic and flows in the gifts of the Holy Spirit are people that are given to intercession. Are people that are always interceding for people. When you pray for people, when I want God to reveal anything to me about 
about you. I just need to set aside some time and begin to pray. As I'm praying, I'm calling your name. 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 It will get to a point that the Holy Ghost will come to me and begin to reveal to me things about you to help me to guide my prayer. Somehow, somehow, you pick it in the realm of the spirit. Because you have been securing your family territory through prayer. One of my sons, he's an engineer. I had a dream. And I saw him. He was leading us somewhere to go and show me a piece of land somewhere. He's into real estate and he's also a civil engineer. Now, we were going, we were three of us. I mean, four of us. No, three. He was leading us. Myself and then someone else was following us. And then we got to a particular junction. And here were these mighty looking pythons. There were about six of them. They fought themselves. They tied themselves together. And so they looked as if they were dead. These pythons were massive. I've never seen that kind of python in, in all my entire life. And these were big pythons. They wrapped themselves. They fought themselves to a point that they look as if they were dead. And we got to that junction. They were just in the junction. We got to that junction and I said to my son, I said to them, I said, these things look as if they are dead. It was a big heap. And then my son, Ralph, I saw him took something like a stick to check if they were alive or if they were dead. We leave them alone. Let's go to where we're going to. While he was trying to check if they were alive, suddenly they grip his hand. And then they grabbed his neck. And then they began to rope him and tie him. And I saw him stretching himself as if he was going to die. And then I didn't know where the cutlass came from in my hand. I began to butcher. I began to cut. I began to cut until we rescued him. By the time I eventually rescued him, he was almost dead. He was unconscious. And I called him when I woke up. I said to him, meet me in church he met me in church and I took oil I prayed for him I anointed him and I averted it and I said to him this is what I saw he said Papa you saw well they were fighting over a piece of land and the people involved it's a long story. I don't even know how to cut it short. But it had to do with land. He bought that land many years ago. Some about seven, eight acres of land. And then some guys came from nowhere. And then the area boys, the Omoniles, now sold his acres. Sold the whole of that area plus his seven acres. To this other man that was rich. And the man came and was trying to take possession of the lands. And the same Omonile went and saw three of them. Now, they were in the middle of the fight. Those were the pythons I saw. They were in the middle of the fight. And then, instead of him to step aside and watch them fight and destroy themselves, he got up and was trying to poke nose into the matter, to say, this is my land and all of that. Meanwhile, the people he bought the land from, he had all the documents and everything in tight. So going to court, he was going to recover back his land. And then those people went diabolical. He said to me, they sent a snake to his house. He said he was, he was sleeping and then he was hearing the smell of something. So they got up that night and was searching where the smell was coming from as if a rat was smelling. So while they were searching, he said they found a snake under their bed. The snake was very calm and peaceful. It was not stranded. It was not in a rush. It was calculatively moving. It means that it has been there for a while. And he said, just that day I called him. He said that morning, one of them told him, he said, we sent you a snake. That is a warning. If you don't step aside, we are going to kill you. Ladies and gentlemen, before it happened, there was a revelation. Why? Because the territory has been secured. We build fences in our houses to secure something. Some people literally live in prison. They put themselves in prison. 
because they are trying to secure themselves. You need to see the kind of fences people build in Lagos. The fence is taller than the house. And then there is another burglary on top of the fence. And I'm like, what's the difference between this one and maximum prison? All we are looking for is to secure our household. It is possible to secure your territory, your family territory. I visited Kenya some years ago and they took me to a wildlife park and I saw something very interesting. I was so curious. I wanted to go to the lion side to see how the lions live. When I got there, I saw something that shook me. I saw a, a lion sitting under a tree. But then I observed that there was a line drawn, very big line in form of a cycle. And the tree was in the midst of the cycle and the lion lay there. And then I asked the lady that was taking us around. And I asked, I said, who, who drew the line inside? And she said to me, the lion did. That every lion marks his territory. And then I asked, I said, supposing I step into the cycle. And she said, then you will have a lot of explaining to do. What you came to look for in his territory. How can I make my house a stronghold? So that the enemy cannot penetrate. Saul was going about persecuting churches. He was going about burning down churches and killing Christians. He was murdering them. The man was wicked. He was ruthless. Was killing from city to city. From city to city. From city to city. He became famous by attacking churches. And then he went and took permission. Got license. To attack the church in Damascus. While he was on his way to Damascus. When he got to the border of Damascus. He couldn't penetrate. The way he penetrated other territories. Why? There was a man in Damascus. By name Ananias. Who has secured the territory of Damascus. In the place of prayer. He had so secured Damascus. That when Saul stepped at the border. Damascus, something happened to him. I don't know who I am talking to. After this encounter, any witch that try your territory, they will meet with your God. I don't like that. They will meet with your God. They will meet with your God. Whether in your office, whether in your marketplace, whether among your family, whoever dares to cross your territory, they will encounter your God. Let me hear that ever three times. He couldn't cross. As soon as he stepped on the border, something strange happened. He said he saw a bright light. And the man fell from his donkey. And the donkey took off. And then he saw a man stood before him. And he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you? He said, I am Christ, the one you have been persecuting. He said, what shall I do? He said, get up. Go to a man by name Ananias. He is the spiritual gatekeeper of this city. He is the megad of this city. He has secured the borders of this city. And he has the key in his hand. Go and meet him. Whatever he tells you to do. Whatever he says, that is what is going to happen. The Bible says, I will give unto you the key of the house of David. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is loose in heaven. Somebody shout that amen like a child of God. And they say, anything he tells you to do, do it. That's a killer. He met something. Something we pass something. There are men that have walked with God. Couldn't enter. A witch will cross your territory, suck your child's blood, ride you like a donkey. You will get up in the morning and say, My waist is paining me, my neck is. Shut up! Push 
your neighbor, tell him it's time to secure your family territory. If that one is looking like a lawyer, turn to the next one, tell him it's time to secure your family territory. One of my daughters came to me. They lost their baby. When they got married, she took and gave back to a baby boy. Some few weeks later, the boy died. From that time, that was about two, three years ago. Each time she takes in is miscarriage. During our 40 days prayer and fasting this year, she said she had a dream. And in that dream, someone came to her and pointed the house where they are living to her. And he said, babies are not allowed in that house. She said, but there are grown up children there. He said, yes, but babies are not allowed. She didn't understand the dream and she didn't tell me. There are about four tenants in that compound. All of them, any of them that the wife took in will have miscarriage. If you stop only deliver, the child will die. So she came and shared the dream with me. And she said, Daddy, this dream has been coming to me repeatedly. He said, they keep pointing the house that babies are not allowed. And then I said to her, you have three houses. Number one is the, the first house is where you are coming from, your father's house. The second house is your husband's house. The third house is where you are living. Now, which of the houses do you see? She says, the one we are living now. I said, Dan, something is wrong in that house. She said, yes. I said, get the three in one. I'm going to pray on it. Take it and mark your territory. Only the landlord have grown up children. All the tenants, four of them, is miscarriage, 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 miscarriage. You don't need the prophet to tell you that you are not in a good place. And I said to her and the husband, you don't need to pack. Just get the three one. Let's secure your territory. And then she took it with the husband. They prayed and anointed their territory. And marked their territory. They marked their territory. And when she took in. While the baby was growing. The landlord came and gave them quick notice. Their rent had not expired. Their rent was remaining about seven months. They renewed their rent. But the man saw. That something bigger than what he has done. Has come to his house. I don't know who I am talking to here. After this encounter. With this revelation. We are the devil has been winning before he will lose in your life 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 in the name of God the Father God the Son God the Holy Ghost let me hear that amen three times it's time to secure your territory This husband man in the book of Matthew where we read, he planted the vineyard. After planting the vineyard, the Bible says he built walls around it to protect his investment. Your family is your investment. Even God marks the territory of his children. Even God secures the territory of his children. Are you aware that we are God's investment? And if anything happens to us, it means that God's investment is being tempered with. That is why the Bible says, he that keepeth Israel, we neither sleep nor slumber. You know why? He is watching over his investment. Who are the Lord's investment? You are God's investment. I pray from today, whoever tries to temper with you, they will die like vulture. They will die like chicken. They will die like vulture. In the name of God the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost, let me hear that amen three times. Rehab 
the prostitute. I don't know how she got this revelation. But I told us yesterday, I said, anytime you come to church, don't be carried away by the dancing and the excitement. Be looking out for these two things. Number one, be sensitive to grab your revelation. Number two, be sensitive to listen to instruction and to carry out the instruction. Because every miracle and testimony you read about in the Bible is traceable to an instruction somebody obeyed. So don't be carried away. Yeah, Abraham at, at age 100, he took it. The wife took it and she gave back. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't just be carried away by the story. There were instructions that the men carefully obeyed. Find out those instructions and obey them. You will get your own result. This is a prostitute. I don't know how she caught the revelation. But she knew that danger was coming to Jericho. When she saw those spies that Joshua sent, she knew that these men were men of God. But the people of Jericho were so diabolical that they couldn't decode that these men were sent by God. So they knew they were strangers and they were out to kill them. And Rahab saw them running. And she opened her door. She said, come in. I'm going to protect you. They came in and she hid them in the roof of her house. The soldiers came asking for this man and, and Rahab said to them, I didn't see them. So they locked up the city gate till night. Searching everywhere, they couldn't find the spies. Three days later, when everywhere was safe, Rachel and I brought them out from the roof. She was feeding them there. And while they were about living, she said to them, I know that God have delivered this city into your hands. How did she know? Revelation. I know that God has delivered this city into your hands. We have heard about what your God have done. He said, but do me a favor. I have a family in this city. When your God descend on this nation, and decide to destroy the nation. Please do me a favor. Secure me and my family. And they looked at her and they said. Because of what you have done. We will protect your family. God actually sent us to spy the land. In less than three days from now. This land will be destroyed. But this is what you will do. Tie a red ribbon. By your window. Kaya. Veka porota kasahataya. He said, tie a red ribbon. But this is what you must also do. Gather all your family members in your house. Any one of them that is outside the house will not be included, will die. Let them all gather in the house. You just tie a red ribbon by the window. And the Bible says when Joshua came, they marched around the city seven times for seven days. On the seventh day, they marched around seven times and they blew the trumpet. The walls of Jericho literally sank down. There was only one part that was standing. Rahab's house. Because the red ribbon was by the window. So even when the angels of destruction entered the land, when they saw the red ribbon, they speared the land. For when I see the blood, I will pass over. When I see the blood, corona will pass over. When I see the blood, witchcraft will pass over. When I see the blood, destruction will pass over. I pray for somebody here. What destroy others will not come near your dwelling place. What wasted others will not come near your house. What ruined others will not come near your dwelling place. In the name of Jesus. Let me hear that amen like a child of God. There is a how to secure your family territory. Yesterday. I showed us three major strongholds that you must confront to enter the promises that God has for you. The promised land. The first one was Egypt. Egypt is not just a geographical location. Egypt is a city in the realm of the spirit. A city that holds men captive. 
And then when you cross that one, you are now faced with Jericho. And after Jericho, you are now faced with Babylon. Because the Babylonian city in the realm of the spirit, they don't attack you. They wait for you to get your blessings. They wait for you to enter the promised land. Why you are relaxed, enjoying the blessings of God, is when the spirit of Babylon strikes. It strikes to pull you back into captivity. It strikes to pull you back into what God has delivered you from. There is what to do to go up. There is what to do to remain on top. Most of the times, it's easier to rise than to remain on top. That's why you see many go up, but they don't last. They come down. Because the forces up there that are working hard to bring you down, they are much more than the ones that are stopping you from rising. Territories. How do I secure my family territory? Number one. Prayer. Somebody say prayer. prayer. I can't hear you say it loud. I say prayer. prayer. The problem is that so many of you don't pray. You only pray when you are in church. Let me talk to women. About the strength of a praying mother. Your prayer. Is strong enough. To secure your children. Oh, God bless me with a praying wife. Sometimes I wake up 2 a.m. My wife is there praying. Praying. Calling my name. Calling the name of our children. She's there praying. SU product. Praying. 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 When you pray like that, my heart is with me. I'm always in the air or on the road for the cause of the gospel. She's on her knees praying and praying. A man of God came to preach in our church. And he, he's a very funny man. And then he said, anytime he travels, he doesn't bother himself about anything. He said, because... The wife is praying. He says she's not praying because she loved me that much. She's praying because she don't want to be a widow. Very funny preacher. <laughs> and we all started laughing. Madam, the time you spend in worrying about your children, why don't you use that time to pray? When last did you wake up by 1 a.m. and pray for two, three hours? For your husband. The only thing you see about your husband. Is that he is a woman chaser. Once his phone rings. Pram, your ears are sharp. Like DSTV antenna. You want to pick signal. What he's saying. Who is he talking to. As soon as he finish your problem is that. Who, who, who was that. You don't secure your territory like that. You secure your territory. In the place of prayer. To a point that any sisi that dares to cross your territory to either have anything to do with your husband she will jam your God am I talking to somebody here she will encounter your God it's not by fighting oh God when last did you spend four hours in the place of prayer praying for your children that is your investment those are your retirement benefits a righteous man leaves behind inheritance. There are physical inheritance and there are spiritual inheritance. Spiritual inheritance is superior to physical inheritance. Some people think leaving money behind, buying landed properties and houses is the best inheritance to leave for your children. Some send them to the best of schools. As good as that is, spiritual security is much more important. Because if they are not secured spiritually, my friend, the house you labor to build, they will sell it and use the money and spend it on prostitutes. The cars you live, they will sell it and use the money to do something useless with it. But when you secure them in the place of prayer, 
Even when they go astray, mercy will bring them back on track. I'm not talking to somebody here. Whether they are in America and you are in Nigeria, they can't just take the wrong step. Why are they about taking the wrong step? Something will bring them back on course. You know why? Because in the place of prayer, you have secured your territory. And one of the reasons why we put fences around our houses is so that nobody will go out anyhow. Mm. It's not just to prevent intruders from coming in. It's also to prevent people inside from going out anyhow. That's why there is a gate. From today, whoever dares into your family territory, either to kill, to steal, or to destroy, may the God of Logos Ministries, the God you serve, may they encounter that your God. I like that, and may they encounter your God in the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let me hear that, Amen, three times. When we moved into our house, where we are now, the first thing I did was to mark the territory with a train one. I made declarations. I spoke into the atmosphere. Made declarations. One day I was in worry preaching for my father, Papa Ayorisa Jaffa. That was that was this year. Yeah, that was this year. My wife called me around 2 a.m. No, that was last year. Around 2 a.m. As soon as the phone rang around 2 a.m., I saw it was, I picked it immediately. And she said, I'm robbers have come to the house. I said, stay calm. She said, but they have gone. They entered other duplexes. Our own was the only one they did not enter. They entered my landlord's own. They took some things. They passed by ours. They did not enter. Because there is a voice by the territory saying do not enter. Do not enter. Do not enter. By the way that it came, by the same shall it return and shall not come into the city, saith the Lord of hosts. Why? The territory is marked. Number two, how do I secure my family territory? The blood. Somebody say with me the blood. I wish believers would understand the power of the communion table. When Adam ate the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, four things happened. Number one, sickness came into the world. Number two, all manner of suffering came. Number three, death came. By eating the forbidden fruit, these three things came into the world. Man was not supposed to die. He was not wired to die. But when, they, when he ate that fruit, sickness came. All manner of suffering came and death came. And when Jesus showed up, which is the last Adam, he said it was eating that brought sickness, brought all manner of suffering. And brought death. So I am not going to stop you from eating. But I will change your diet. I will give you something you will eat. That will reverse the death. Something you will eat that will reverse the sickness. Something you will eat that will reverse the all manner of suffering. And then he stood and said I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna, they died. <laughs> but this one I'm going to give you. When you eat, you will not die. 
they didn't understand what the man was saying. And then he said, I am the bread of life. He said, except you eat my flesh and you drink my blood. He said, you have no, you have no eternal life in you. They didn't understand what he was saying. They looked at him, they said, what is he talking about? So all these things, all this accusation against this man that is a ritualist and he's, he's, he's an occultist is true. How can you give us your flesh to eat? The Bible says they got offended and they left him and Jesus said to his disciples, he said, I am I'm the bread of life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood. And if you get back to the book of Leviticus, he said, he said the life of every flesh is in the blood. He said, I have given my blood on the altar to make atonement for your soul. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So the life of every flesh is in the blood. So the life of Christ is in his blood. And Christ did not know sickness. He had never fallen sick for once. He never fell sick for once. He never suffered for once. And he said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood. First Adam ate fruit. Problem came. Last Adam say, if you eat what I give you, you don't understand. It will reverse the order of the first Adam. And when he finished talking, he took physical bread and took physical wine. And he lifted it up. And he said to them, this bread is my flesh. That bread did not come from heaven. It was the same type of bread they sell in the supermarket. He took it and lifted it up. They thought he was going to cut his body into pieces and give them to eat. He took the bread made by man, took the wine made by man and lifted it up. He said, this is my flesh. As you eat it, you will have, you will have eternal life in you. And then he took the, the wine. He said, this is my blood. As you drink it, you will have eternal life in you. What is eternal life? Eternal life here is not just talking about life you will spend with God in heaven in eternity. Eternal life here is talking about a life that void of sickness. A life that is void of demonic harassment. Are you aware that there are people that live in this world as if there is no Satan? Those that know they are God. Somebody's not understanding what I'm saying. Are you understanding what I'm saying at all? When you drink his blood, there are sicknesses that travel through family bloodline. But the bloodline of Jesus had no sickness. So when I drink it, if there is any sickness in my body, it will be neutralized immediately. You know why? Because I take the blood that is flowing from the veins of the cross. And so there is no sickness. There is no death. Untimely death. Not premature death. Show me a church that is standing strong in spite of crisis. And I will show you a church that does not play with the Holy Communion. Other churches go through crisis and the church closed down. But a church that does not play with the communion, no matter the crisis. As a matter of fact, the crisis only shake off those that should go. And the ones that will help you to grow are the ones that remain. Suddenly, the glory of the latter house becomes greater than the former. You know why? Because by the blood... The territory is being secured. You don't just take communion in the church. Jesus said as often as you do this. At home we take communion. My children know that every Thursday. We gather at home. We have the coordinator that gathers all the communion cups. My youngest daughter. We have the one that prays. We share and give everybody. They know. That every Thursday, we're taking the communion at home. Apart from the church. Secure your territory by the blood. Are you with me here this afternoon? Or oh, you're already tired of me? Secure your family territory by sacrificial giving. Job chapter 1 
Let's go to verse 3. Job chapter 1 and verse 3. Give me Job chapter 1. I mean verse 6. Job chapter 1 and verse 6. Go to verse 6. Let's start from verse 1. So that there is looking for. Job 1.1. 1, 1. Let's start from verse 1. There's something I'm looking for here. I want to show you what Job was doing on a daily basis. There was a man of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men in the east, was the richest man in the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. That's five. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job, this is where I'm looking for, Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and did what? I can't hear, did what? I can't hear, did what? Offered burnt offering according to what? Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job once in a year. How long was he doing it? Look at it on the screen. These people are tired. Let's close then. He did it when? Continually. Seven sons and three daughters. He will offer burnt offering to God on each of them. Seven sons, three daughters, ten children. He will offer burnt offering, burnt sacrifice to God concerning each, of, each and every one of them. In other words, he will carry a sacrifice for the ten sons, seven sons and three daughters, each of them. Let me just give an example. Seven of them, okay, I make it one, 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 one thousand. That is ten thousand. I drop it on the altar, not because pastor said so, not because I am under pressure, but because I understand what it means to secure my family territory. So at the beginning of every month, I now take a burnt offering or a sacrifice and I come before the altar of Jehovah, whether they call for it or not. And I walk to the altar of the God I serve and I drop it on the altar, mentioning the names of my sons and daughters and telling God, perhaps any one of them had sinned against you, let mercy prevail over them. If any one of them is involved in any accident, let him not die let him survive while he is in school let him be free from all cost cultists let him not fall into the hands of rapists let him not be victim of tragedy or victim of calamities the bible says he did that continually and in verse 10 satan began to explain to us or tell us the effect of what job did Satan went to God and he said, you have built an edge around this man. By virtue of Job's continuous commitment to his spiritual exercise, there was a strong fence around his family that Satan couldn't penetrate. He had to take permission from God. When God said go, Satan still complained. He said, you say I should go. You have not removed the fence. How am I going to penetrate? Isn't it very interesting, ladies and gentlemen, that what we do physically on God's altar is registered in the spirit realm. What makes men strong in the physical is their commitment to their altar. Witches and wizards are human beings like you and I. Why are you afraid of them? They are committed to their demonic altar and demonic activities so much that they have built 
something heavy in the spirit realm built a heavy demonic presence. If a child of God can be that committed to the things of God, you will build a heavy presence in the realm of the spirit that when you walk into a place, all the agents they will see you and they will just step aside. Are these people hearing what I'm saying here? Are you aware that when you are a man of prayer, a woman of prayer, when you walk into a meeting, it used to happen so much in my meetings until one day I had to tell God, if this thing is from you, reduce this thing, let it stop. Because you walk into a place you can't preach. As you're walking, people are shouting and some assaulting and things. People are just some assaulting and falling and breaking chairs, scattering the whole place. You want to open the Bible, you can't talk. Because the people are so scattered on the floor that they are not listening to whatever you have to preach. Because you have built a strong presence in the realm of the spirit. Nobody will dare your family from today. Nobody will dare you from today. In the name of God the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost, let me hear that amen like a child of God. Number four. Is it number four or number three? How do I secure my family territory? The oil. Somebody sold me the oil. Psalm 72. David was old. Getting ready to die. He had lost so many of his children. He lost Abnon. He lost Absalom. He didn't want to lose Solomon. He sent for the oil. They took the oil by the altar and brought it to him. And he called his son Solomon. He said, kneel down my son. And he took the oil. He has preserved that oil right from when he was young. For a day such as that. He poured the oil on Solomon. He began to make pronouncements on Solomon in the book of Psalms 72. One of the prayers that David prayed for Solomon was like, was that let the gold of Sheba be given to Solomon. He said in his days, let gold be like the dust on the face of the earth. He prayed and asked God for wisdom for his son Solomon. It was the prayer of David that secured the throne and Israel for Solomon. Solomon became king. David had never been to Sheba. But he made a pronouncement that the gold of Sheba be given to Solomon. The wisdom of Solomon, the news so spread that the queen of Sheba from Africa heard about how Solomon's kingdom was organized. The Bible says she took so much gold and went to visit Solomon. In response to the prayer that David prayed for Solomon in the closet, something moved the queen of Sheba. She took so much gold and went and visited Solomon to see if what she had was the truth. When she got there, she was so bamboozled with the wisdom of Solomon and the administrative structure to a point that she said to Solomon, guy, what I am saying is more than what I had. She gave Solomon so much gold. So much gold that Bible scholar says in the days of Solomon, gold was like the dust on the seashore because it was given to him by the queen of Sheba from Africa because his father prayed for him. Listen to me. You may leave your children with money, houses, and properties, but listen to me. Don't you ever forget about praying and anointing your children. Always pray and anoint your children. Anoint your household, anoint your wife, anoint yourself, anoint every member of your household. Am I talking to somebody here? Is anybody hearing me here this afternoon? Anoint your territory. Lastly, how do I secure my family territory? By your commitment to the things of God. He said, believe the Lord your God and you and your household shall be saved. 
don't just be a church member that comes to church and sit down and do nothing. After service, you carry your fine Bible, jump into your fine car, and drive yourself to your fine house, and you are doing nothing for the kingdom. Look for something in God's house that you can do. If you decide to join any workforce and they refuse you from joining, look for something in the church that you can do. I'm a guest here, but I'm also a member here. And when I came here, I saw something that needs to be done. And I'm not saying it because I want to despise you. No. I only want to point it to you. You see some of these cobwebs. You don't need to wait for daddy to say it. Drive your fine car with your fine family and to the fine church. Look for a fine ladder. Climb on the fine ladder. Yes, you are the CEO of your company. I understand. You are the director general. I understand. It is God that made you one. If you can't leave that in your own house, then it shouldn't be found in the house of God. Am I talking to somebody here? There is this man in Baba's church in Wari, Papa Ayo's church. The man used to come to church. He had no job. He would come to church. He would go and wash the toilet. Wash the church toilet. Wash everywhere. Nobody told him to do it. He would always come and wash. It was in the place of prayer that God showed him the church toilet. He went to use the toilet and he saw that some parts were dirty. And God told him from today, you are responsible for the cleaning of the toilets. The man was doing it with excitement. Doing it with excitement. One day he had a dream. God came to him and said, now take this same thing you are doing. Start up a company that clean toilets for people. And then he started. Printed complimentary cards. Was sharing to people. Sharing to companies with clean toilets. Glory to God. With clean toilets. He was so excited about it. To cut the long story short, he had over 200 staffs that he employed. He would get the contracts. He would send them to go and wash the toilets. He became a multi-millionaire by washing toilets. While others were in the same church calling on God for breakthrough. Whatever we do for God... Echoes in eternity. Stand to your feet. How committed are you? They killed James. Killed John the Baptist. Killed babies. But when it got to Peter. The same man that killed John the Baptist. That killed <laughs> James. Couldn't kill Peter. Because when he stretched his hand against Peter. The whole church stood and secured the life of Peter in the place of prayer. So while Peter was in prison. An angel was released from heaven broke the chains from his hands and said follow me because Peter was so committed I pray for you that what destroy other families will not harm your family I like that amen what crippled over families will not cripple your family in the mighty name of Jesus lift up your right hand Today you will pray for your family. You will call them by their names. Your children, you will call them by their names. Don't bother about who is by your side. Don't care about who is hearing or who is not hearing. You will pray. You are standing before the altar of the almighty God. The remaining days of 2020. Lord, I pray for my wife. I pray for my wife Vivian. I pray for my son Joseph. I pray for my daughter. Call them 
by their names. Lord, I secure them in the place of prayer. I secure my family territory. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rise against us is hereby condemning judgment. Whoever is I in my family to harm my family, Lord, I blind their eyes. All the attempt to harm my family, Lord, I cancel it. Open your mouth wherever you are. Begin to pray for your family. Pray for your family. Pray for your husband. Pray for for your wife, pray for your son, pray for your daughters. Open your mouth wherever you are. Begin to pray. 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 No harm shall come to my son. Somebody open your mouth and pray. 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 Come on, somebody's not praying. Call them by their names. Call them by their names. Job called them by their names. When he stood before God, he called them by their names. They are not in Nigeria. Wherever they are, call them by their names. If they are in America, call them by their names. I am not there with you, but this pandemic will not come near you. I am not there with you, but this pandemic will not come near your house. You will escape it. You will survive it. Open your mouth and pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. You are not yet married. You will marry someday. Begin to pray for your husband now. You are not yet married. You are going to marry someday. Begin to pray for your wife now. You don't have a child yet. You are going to have them someday. Begin to pray for them right now. Open your mouth and pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Pray. I will not bury my son. I will not bury my child. I invoke the message of God upon my son. I invoke the message of God upon my daughter. Pray, call them by name. I pray for courage. Any trap of the enemy set for her, she will escape it. I pray for cherish. I command doors of opportunities open for her. Lord, I hand them over to you. I pray for Kara that your mighty hand will rest upon her. I pray for my wife that your grace will abound in her life. I pray for the church. I pray for the ministry. Come on, pray. Call them by their names. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let me hear that amen like a child of God. Lift up your right hand, say with me, oh God. In the name of Jesus, any dark cloud gathering over my family, gathering over my child, gathering over my children, I scatter that cloud. I scatter that cloud. I scatter that cloud. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Any dark cloud gathering over your son, gathering over your daughter, scatter that cloud. Scatter that cloud. Ah. 
yes, yes. Scatter that dark cloud over your husband. Scatter that dark cloud over your wife. Scatter that dark cloud over any of your child. Scatter that cloud. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Let me hear that amen like a child of God. Please don't be in a hurry to go. Let's pray this prayer points. Lift up your right hand. David had to cry to God. He said, deliver me from strange children. Deliver me from strange children. Who are strange children? Strange children are children that came out of your loins. They came out of you, but they don't look like you. Strange children are the ones that pick arms against their father. Absalom took arms against his father. Teamed up with the enemies of his father to waste his father. Strange children are children that call you daddy when they are with you, but behind you, they insult you in the public. Absalom slept, raped his father's wives in the public. Abner raped his sister. Absalom killed Abner. Brother killed brother. David cried out to God. He said, deliver me from strange children. Your children shall not be strange children. Hey, 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 hey. Your children will not be strange children. Your children shall not be strange children. Your son shall not be a strange son. Your daughter shall not be a strange daughter. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your right hand. You're going to pray. Lord, let my children be sons and daughters of consolation. Ah, ah, ah. Paul, Paul said, I thank God for the coming of Barnabas. He says, my son of consolation. Sons of consolation are sons that wipe away the tears of their father. Sons of consolation are children that wipe away the tears of their mother. Ah, sons of consolation are the ones that remove their parents from shame. Sons of consolation are children that make their parents proud. Lift up your right hand, say with me, oh God. Shout it louder, oh God. Let my sons and daughters be sons and daughters of consolation. Let them be my sons and daughters of consolation. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Somebody pray. Clap those hands and pray. Clap those hands and pray. Oh, oh, oh. Let my sons and daughters be children of consolation. Let them be my sons and daughters of consolation. There shall not be strange children. There will not be strange children. Somebody pray. Let the God of your father let him deliver your children. Let him protect your children. Your children shall not be strange children. Your sons shall not be strange children. They shall be sons and daughters of consolation. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. 
Somebody pray. Pray. Your children shall not be children of, they shall not be strange children. They will not be strange children. They will not be strange children. Ah, 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 ah. Your children will not cause you pain. Your children will not cause you shame. Your children will not bring shame to you. They will be your sons and daughters of consolation. Lord, seek out my family territory. Somebody pray. 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 of consolation be daughters of consolation marana mahasayamo kana mahasaye nayabaro sarare lebo sarara yararabo sarare lesoro Let my labor not be in vain. Let my labor upon my family not be in vain. children I will not bury my child Lika Barata Hai they will not die they will leave Lord I secure them I bring them before you I bring my children I bring my sons I bring my daughters I bring my families before you Lord Lord secure them for me Build a hedge of security around them. Yanana, Yala Serene, Yanano, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, thank you, Father. 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 Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, your prayer is strong enough to bring your child back on track, to bring your children back on track. Leave a casa higher. Any one of them in prison, we command the prison doors open. We bring them out of prison. We bring them out of captivity. We bring them out of bondage. Thank you, Father. 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 Ah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of
Lord Jesus. You will not bury your children. None of your sons or daughters will be strange children to you. bed what type of son are you none of them will be a strange child I pray for you today that may all your sons and daughters be children of consolation to you And when they are getting married, another woman will not represent you. Another person will not stand on your behalf. You will be there to witness their wedding. You will carry your grandchildren. You will carry your grandchildren. You will carry your great grandchildren. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Carry your train, one in your hand now. Carry your train, one in your hand. The water, the blood, and the oil, carry it in your hand now. We want to pray. We want to pray. Ha. A widow suffered to raise her son. Did many jobs to raise her son. Only for the boy to come back and use her for money ritual. Killed her. Used her blood to make money. When she was raising him, she had so much hope that no matter what I'm going through, my son will wipe away my tears. David said, deliver me from strange children. Ah, in ministry, we have so many children. Every now and then, I cry to God. I say, let my sons and daughters in the ministry and in the church, let them be my sons of consolation. Let them not be strange children. Strange children will break your church, break your walk, your labor of ceremony. So many years will break. Break your heart, break everything and go. Leave you in pains and you are bleeding. Strange children. Strange children. Carry your three in one in your hand, please. Don't, don't, please don't joke with this service, please. Please. Please don't. 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 You will not lose your children. You will not lose your child. In the mighty name of Jesus. Carry the train one in your hand. I want to pray on it. You are here. Let's bring down the volume of the keyboard. I want to give you this opportunity to do this. I can't just stop it. You have children. You have sons and daughters. You want to secure them by the altar. Of the almighty God. You want to secure your family territory. And like Job did. Continually he will offer sacrifice. Born sacrifice on God's altar. According to their number. I don't know how many are there. But you will pick. 10,000. You will pick 20. According to your level. According to your standard. Your level. And how much value you place on your sons. And your daughters. You will pick up 20, you will pick up 30, you pick up 50, you pick up 10. But let it not be less than 10. You will run to this altar. You have it now, you can drop it. Or you transfer it in the church account. Or you just, you, you bring it to the office or whatever. Leave your seat and come and stand by this altar. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. According to your level, 
You can afford 50, do it. You can afford 100, do it. You can afford 20, you can afford 10. But let it not be less than 10. Find your way to the altar. 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 Come, wherever you are, come. 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 Jesus. Jesus. Two Sundays ago in our church, service was going on. There is this woman that is always praying for her children. She made, she made, she made offering box for the church, brought it by the altar. She sat in the service and she said, the voice came to her and said, get up. Your daughter Joy is in trouble. Get up. Go to the altar. Pray for her and drop a sacrifice on the altar. I was preaching when the woman ran to the altar. She prayed on the altar. I saw her knelt by the altar. She was praying. I left her alone. And then she dropped a certain amount of money on the altar. Nobody told her to do that. But she had the Holy Ghost. And after service on her way home, her daughter Joy called and she was crying. He said, Mommy, I called from Enugu. He said, Mommy, we closed from church. On my way home, I entered the wrong keke napeb. The keke napeb, a ritualist. They took me far into the bush. He said they took everything from me. He said they raped me. And then they used their white handkerchief and cleaned the blood and took it away. They dumped me and left. There was confusion among them. One said, kill her, kill her, kill her. Let's remove the parts. The other one said, just throw her, just throw her. And then they pushed her and threw her away and they left. Why, did they, why didn't they kill her and cut off the parts? The mother that was always praying for her children picked it in the spirit. She ran to the altar immediately and secured her daughter on the altar. I called her, she was crying. I said, don't cry. Those that did this will not go unpunished. Prayed with her. Told Catherine why I pray on it. I said, whatever they took your blood to go and do, it will have no effect over your life prayed on the three in one and she drank it. She went to the hospital. They checked her, examined her. She was okay. But then some days later, she said she was having some body pains and she went back to the hospital. Some spot in her body. It looked as if it was mosquito bite. When she scratched it, maggots started dropping out. She recorded it and sent it to me. Holy Ghost sent me. The thing they used her blood to do was supposed to kill her. But the three in one flushed it out of her body. The doctor gave her some strong antibiotics. I spoke with her yesterday again to find out how she was doing. She said, Daddy, I am fine. I am okay now. Your children. Your children. You are out there, baby. 10, you can't afford up to 10, but you can afford 5. Join these people, your family. Let's secure them by the altar of the Almighty. Please, you may forget anything I've said in this meeting. Don't forget this one. These points I give to you, go and walk on them, every one of you. Every day if you can, pray for your family. Pray for your family. Pray for your family. Pray for your family. You have yours, you can drop it now. You don't have it now. You want to do transfer, they are going to put the account number on the screen. You will do the transfer. But listen, listen to this, it's very important. After you have done the transfer, you need to see daddy. Let him pray. Let him pray for you. And speak over your family. And speak over your children. Apart from the almighty God, he is the highest authority in this church. Apart from God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He is the highest authority here. Let him speak. Because every now and then, daddy is on his knees with mommy praying to secure all of you and your families. As soon as you redeem your sacrifice, and I want you to do that immediately so that tomorrow you can run to the office. Let daddy pray. Some of you are already having issues, challenges with your children. Or with, a, with one of your sons or daughters. It's giving you concern. It's time to secure him. Before the almighty God. Father I pray. For this one standing by your altar. Jesus. 
Your blessings, they make it rich and add no sorrow. Father, I pray that you will secure their families. Be a wall of fire round about their families. Round about their children. Round about their household. Their children shall not be strange children. They will not be strange children. Let their sons and daughters be sons and daughters of consolation. I pray for these ones. They will live to enjoy the fruit of their labor. Their investment on their children shall not be wasted. They will not bury any of their children. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are the God of sacrifice. Or not their sacrifices. Honor their sacrifices. Honor their sacrifices. Have respect unto their sacrifices. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you heavenly father. In Jesus name. Listen to this instruction again. It's very important. Do all you can. Redeem yours. As quick as you can. Tomorrow. Come to the office. Don't wait till midweek service. No, no, no. Come. If you can do it today, fine. But see, daddy. Let the mystery of the oil speak over you and your family. Let daddy make a pronouncement. Let him say something. Oh, let him say something. Let him say something. Over your entire household. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Don't forget, let daddy say something and let him touch you with oil, if possible. Let him touch you with oil. Don't play with this. Don't joke with it. You will not cry over any of your child. You will not. In the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. You have yours to drop. Go ahead and drop. You don't have it? I want to pray for everybody. Lift up your three in one right now. I want to pray and then I will hand over the microphone. And daddy will also pray over the three in one. Now this is what you're going to do. You will mix it after the prayer. First John chapter 5 and verse 8. Put it on the screen. First John 5, 8. First John chapter 5 and verse 8. And there are three. That bears witness on earth. The spirit. The water. And the blood. These three agree together. As one. He said if the earthly witnesses are strong. How much more. The witnesses in heaven. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Verse 9. Verse 9. If we receive the witness of man. Then the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God. Which he had testified of his son. Lift it up. The three in one. Father, I stand on your word that cannot be broken. I sanctify these tokens in their hands with the blood of Jesus. I remove the chemical components out of it. It ceases to be ordinary drinks. It ceases to be ordinary wine, ordinary oil, ordinary water. It becomes a token for a release and a demonstration of your power. I hereby sanctify it with the blood of Jesus. I dedicate this element to you. In the name of God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. I sanctify them with the blood of Jesus. What the Spirit can do, do it through this oil. What the blood can do, do it through this wine. And what your power can do, do it through this water. 
Wherever these tokens touch, any location, any environment that these tokens touch is hereby marked for divine protection. Let your power saturate and evade the atmosphere where these tokens will be poured. In the name of Jesus, let demonic activities be suspended and destroyed. Let satanic yokes be broken. Let strange sicknesses disappear. Let demonic causes be lifted. Let tokens of death and destruction buried in the soil be destroyed. And anyone living in the house or a compa that has been marked by demonic forces that does not allow progress of the tenants. As the three in one touch that environment, we command the power broken over that environment. Whatever was buried at the foundation of that house to frustrate men, as the three in one touch that environment, we subdue the powers at that foundation. In the name of Jesus. Over that shop. Any animal. Any human sacrifice. Buried at the foundation of that shop. That does not permit progress. As the three in one touch that shop. We command the powers behind those sacrifices. Broken in the name of Jesus. Let your power invade the atmosphere of that shop. Let your glory rise like the sun and saturate that atmosphere in the name of Jesus. As they mark their territories, my father, I pray, let the spirit of death pass over them. They will not mourn. They will not cry. And any one of them that have someone in the hospital, as they come in contact with the three in one, let that sickness disappear from their bodies. And those of them believing you for the fruit of the womb, as they partake of the three in one, I command the yoke broken. I declare them mothers of babies in the mighty name of Jesus. Let low sperm count be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I give a praise. I give a glory. Pick up a seed in your hand. Pick up an offering, a seed in your hand. Pick up a thousand or pick up five hundred or pick up something. Pick up a seed in your hand and hold it in your hand quickly. Pick it up quickly. Pick it up quickly. Pick it up quickly. I'm going to hand over to daddy. He will pray over the three in one also. And then we'll walk to the altar and come and drop whatever is in our hand. We'll come and drop it on God's altar. I will see you again. And before I see you again, they will hear your testimony in this church. That amen does not look like my prayer. Your testimony will look as if God is partial in the mighty name of Jesus. Your testimony will shake your family. Your testimony will shake this church. Somebody's not saying amen at all. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give a praise, we give a glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Did I bless you today? Did I bless you today? I can hear you. Did I bless you in this meeting? God will enlarge your coast. God will prosper you. And those of you that came from far, God will take you back safely. In the mighty name of Jesus. A major breakthrough between now and the end of December will hit your life. If your amen is the loudest, you will be the first to testify. Now let's everybody rise. Let's rise on our feet. Pick up your seed in your hand. And see you hold a three in one. Daddy will come and pray on our three in one. And then he will instruct us on how to redeem our commitment. And then we will drop our seed on the altar. And then we will go. Merry Christmas in advance. God bless you. Very quickly, I want you to stretch out your hands to the servant of God. While you are still holding what is in your hand, stretch your hand towards him. Our Lord and our God, we ask that your anointing will multiply. Your grace upon your servant will double his potential. We are asking that the favor that he has paid, prayed for every one of us shall become his inheritance. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk forward quickly and just drop your offering on the altar. Then I'll give you instruction for that. Please come forward. Drop it quickly at the altar. And then go back to your seat and sit down to hear for the instruction. What the Lord has done for me. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. If it were to be mine, I would really pay. I would really pay. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Yeah, come and see oh, what the Lord has done for me. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. If it were to be mine, I would really pay. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Oh, if it were to be man, I would really pay. He has broken all of my chain, giving me victory. and close the meeting. Give us a good song and don't get distracted like you just got to. Let's have some songs of praises together.
Father and the Lord the one I respect because I respect fatherhood. Called me all the way from Abuja. He was on his way to travel out of the country. And he said, I have a meeting in my church and you need to be there today without an excuse and preach three services. I didn't give any complaint, even though it was painful. I've never missed combined service before. So I had to leave the house at 6.30 a.m., rest down there, preach the first service, preach the second service, preach the third service, and we're coming at the speed to meet the meeting today. My obedience to the one I respect will bring you victory over the problem that you have. The Bible says, having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience are fulfilled. The last time you ever cry in your life will be the last you will ever cry. I stand on this altar as a father today and I decree that every disobedient child they shall come to order today. Wherever they are now, let the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit grip them and turn their heart to the heart of their father. And you will secure their loyalty and their obedience. In the name of Jesus, this prayer is for any of your children, your wife, and everyone that is sick around you. While they are away far from here, let the sickness in their body begin to disappear. On the 1st of November 2020, let the table of your enemy be turned upside down. Everyone that hates you shall be frustrated for your sake. I decree today the spirit of retrogression is replaced by the spirit of progression. You will progress. You will break through. You will undo what you have never handled before. This is the 11th hour, the 11th month of 2020. I stand on the word of God today and I decree that what you have looked for since January till now will drop into your hands. You will not beg for bread. Your children will not beg for bread. Your generation will not beg for bread. Problem you cannot handle will not come near you. Every enemy that rises against you shall fall for your sake. I address the stronghold of Egypt that had to do with your root and your tentacle. Today, you will break through that stronghold. I address the stronghold of Jericho. And every wall that has walled you from the point of your blessing, let that wall begin to break down. I address the Babylonian strongholds that make a man labor at the top and come down. And his blessing become a past tense. It shall never be yours. You will progress. The lay is broken. The finger of the enemy is muddled off. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your two hands above your head. Say this with a loud voice. That's the prophetic word before you go. Say, I stand on the word of God. That's not the voice I want to hear. I want to hear a loud voice. I stand on the word of God. On the first day of November 2020. I receive the key of my victory. Every battle this month. Shall be my pathway to testimony. I will not be found where I am left. Where I am now. Say it louder. Where I am now, shout it louder. Where I am now, will be the least I will ever be. In the name of Jesus, Satan, listen to me. Whatever you are holding that belongs to me, you will vomit it in the month of November. In the name of Jesus. Every hanging testimonies, they shall come to limelight in the month of November. I prophesy to myself that everyone pregnant of my miracle 
everyone anointed by God to bless me. But withholding that blessing right now, let labor pain catch them and let them deliver my miracle. Oh Lord, I didn't hear you. I said, Oh Lord, send me advertisers. Send me destiny helpers who will carry me on the wings of the eagle and land me on the area of my victory. I receive it by faith and it is my portion. In Jesus' name, shout the loudest amen you have never shouted in your life. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's sit down so that the instruction can be clear before we share the grace together. As you are sitting down, you are sitting down and God will give you rest. Every struggle is out of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's listen very carefully, very, very carefully. If you are hearing me, wave your hands. Thank you. Between now and December, do not bury any member of your family. You will not bury your wife. You will not bury your children. Armed robbers will forget the address of your house. Kidnappers will never come near you. Whatever evil that is happening in the city will not affect you. Even though there is going to be famine, it will not be your portion. You will have enough to spend. You have enough to spare. In Jesus' name I pray. Give me three loud amen. Number one. Number two, Amen. give me the loudest your voice can afford. Amen. I want to congratulate you for the success of our pulling down strong goals. This is the best we have ever had. Let's give the clap to our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank Reverend Akishi, who is the chairman of the committee of this um, pulling down strong goal and his team. We thank you. The Lord will bless you. Please appreciate him. Thank you. All our reverend and they have made this meeting very successful. Reverend Tamuno Chisme came all the way from Bayesa. Can you shout praise the Lord? Let's hear your voice. Hallelujah. Reverend Ignatius is there. Can you shout and let's hear you? I guess Reverend Oh, we'll just step out in a minute and he'll be back and we'll still appreciate him. All the Deacon Deaconesses, pastors, wives, every department you have done so tremendously well. The Lord will bless you. I, you don't like them. I said the Lord will bless them. I want to appreciate the choir particularly. You know, our choir is no longer a local choir. They are international choir. Why I rise up and give me a shout of hallelujah. Shh. Choir, rise up. Give me a loudest shout of hallelujah. I appreciate the choir. Appreciate the choir. Appreciate the choir. Our media team. You see, when you enter this church, you know that this is now one of the church you can just wave aside. The media team are professionals. Professionals. Media team, shout praise the Lord over there. Hallelujah. The ushers, the security outside and everyone, you have worked so well. The Lord will not forget you. The Bible said the Lord will not forget the labor of love that you have invested. Your greater years are yet to come. I have two major announcements for you before we close. The first one is that our website has been designed and today we are launching the website. Put your hands together. Now when I say we are launching, don't, I'm not asking you to bring money. I'm just telling you that we are taking it off today. And the address of the website is, you already seen it, that's, that's the website. Logos Ministry Incorporated, this is our website. Can you see the leadership vision? Can you, can you 
move it on and let's see some things. Some of you have seen yourself already. Everybody sees you all over the world on our website. That's the website. It talks about home, about us, and all that. Logos Hour is advertised at the website. Now they are clicking it. That's how when you open Logos Ministry, um, inc.org, this is what you're going to find. Beautiful, the artistic work. You can send your prayer request. All the program that we do for the year. January, you can see Faith for New Beginning. You can scroll through. The next time you are going to open this site, you see the date of our new beginning, our date for spiritual warfare, our date for Stop That Cry, our date for pulling down strongholds, our date for mop up operation. This is the layout. This is the photo gallery. So any of these you can download and you can pick them. In fact, with time, the message that we have just heard now, you can download all of them and listen to them at the website. All the memories of the past, Zilia Gray, Odwayo, all the people that have ever been here to minister to us. You remember the, what's his name now? Brass, Brass Band. Remember dedication. This is one of the dedication we did. Look at the women in green. and look at, So many things. The, the beauty of the website cannot be described. I think we are so grateful. Look at all these are stories. There's a gallery layout of our church at the website. You have access to all this on your computer, even on your phone. There's a website, the beauty of it. Pictures everywhere. Pictures everywhere. Apart from pictures, every message you can download. In fact, the good of this is that you can buy your CD, your DVD, and anything you can buy on the website. Don't need to run to the office to say, I want to buy this. All our books, they are all advertised there. Said the scripture, um, Mama's book that have just been launched. Everything you find there by the website. So right there on a click with your uh, ATM card, you can buy any resources from our site. I want to say thank you very much to Brother Emeye and the team that work with this. Get to the website and find out anything you can find at Logos Ministry. The, the address of the website is Logos Ministry Incorporated, I-N-C dot O-R-G. That's our website. So from now on, you have an access to that site anytime, any day on your phone. With time, we're going to have podcasts where you can just open up and you see me preaching, you see me praying, you see me ministering to you. you can send me prayer requests. I open it, I'll pray on it, send you back messages. We're going to have a lot of email addresses where you can send your prayer requests and chat with me without having to take transport. Hey, let me jump to there, let me jump to there. You, are you, don't, you, don't, you don't need all that anymore. Just at the comfort of your bedroom, just type. I will answer you. We'll talk. i pray with you. You are on. We want to thank God for this. This is another level upstairs. Shout hallelujah. Have I lost you? I said shout hallelujah. So that's about the website. Now concerning Apostle Timbacher's instruction. I will be in the office tomorrow from the morning, 9 o'clock to 2 p.m. Tuesday, 9 o'clock to 2 p.m. Wednesday, 9 o'clock to 2 p.m. But on Thursday, I will not be in the office because that's miracle service. I need to prepare. I need to do a few things. So Thursday, you will miss me. So anything that has to do with I'm paying my vow, I want the bishop to pray for me, I want to be anointed, tomorrow, 9 o'clock, I'll be in the office. Tuesday, 9 o'clock, I'll be in the office. Wednesday, 9 o'clock, I'll be in the office. Don't let this week pass. Catch that fire. If you make a vow, I'll be in the office also to pray for you. Our accountant will be there. Everything will be done without any distraction. If you pay your vow and you need me to say pray for you, meet me tomorrow. There's no protocol. I'll be in the office seated waiting for you to pray for you tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday. May the almighty God bless you. Amen. That's the problem I have. You know where I'm coming from when I said the almighty God bless them. They shouted amen, but you are too familiar with me. You can't say amen again. May the almighty God bless you. Amen. May he bless your family. Amen. May he do for you what you cannot do for yourself. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the longest meeting we have ever had and so refreshing. You can't believe it's 125 and we still feel like continuing. God will not stop to bless us. Please, all our pastors and assistant pastor, we will meet very briefly in my office before we go. We need to arrange a few things and put some things together, both for now and also for our stop that cry in the month of November. Are you expecting that? God bless you. Yes, what am I forgetting? Hallelujah. When I praise the media, I also mean to praise the department. So they are reminding me I didn't praise the technical department. Technical department, I praise you. Hallelujah. Now, before we share the grace together, just one minute, make that announcement quickly so that I don't have to go back and I can just pray for the people before they go. Please keep standing. You don't need to sit again. We are Take done. Please stop that cry comes up on 27 to 29th of November 2020. Hallelujah. And the committee that we handle it, of course, group pastors are going to be in the bishop's office. The committee that is going to handle Stop That Cry, these are the members, Reverend Solomon Rowley, Reverend Imbago Ignatius, Reverend Adebisi Sunday, Pastor Tobe Odibo, Pastor Paul Dango, Pastor Fribelsina, Pastor Gogo Iyaye, Pastor Goodness Enwa, Pastor Dr. Etelbert Amadi, and Pastor Emmanuel Ekedebe. Please, all assistant pastors, all pastors, meet in Bishop's office immediately after the meeting. All the newcomers, those who came, today is your first day of Friday, Saturday, Sunday is your first day. Please, when we close, just sit down where you are. Reverend Oluwole, Solomon Oluwole will address you on behalf of our Father. Please, just patiently wait. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daddy. One more time, please help me put it on together for our Father, the only Father we have. Thank you, Daddy. As you go, may the Lord go with you. May his hand be strong upon your life. Every door that will be shut against you shall be opened this week. This week the Lord will open a door that you do not expect. And it shall be your portion. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. With a loud voice, let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and as sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Bless all our newcomers. Carry me the go, the go, the go. Carry me the go, Jehovah. Carry me the go, the go, the go. Carry me the go, Jehovah. Carry me the go, the go, the go. Carry me the go, Jehovah. Carry me the go, the go, the go.